I'm Madison Michelle. Welcome to TV Guide Close Up, the one hour show that brings you the latest in the world of movies, music, and TV. On this edition, we're exploring the universe of science fiction television. It's a genre where pushing the boundaries of imagination is not only encouraged, it's practically mandatory. Alien abductions, time travel, and the use of mind-bending gadgets and weapons are just some of the out-of-this-world things fans have come to expect from their favorite sci-fi shows. Coming up, we take a look to see how Stargate SG-1 has taken a big screen hit and made it one of the most popular sci-fi shows in history. And a cult classic gets a makeover in the new Battlestar Galactica. Plus, we'll see what makes Smallville such a super hit. Get ready to jump to hyperspeed as Close Up explores the world of sci-fi TV. When you talk about sci-fi, one TV show stands above the rest as the final frontier because it boldly went where no other show had gone before. It's Star Trek, the show that launched a franchise that is still thriving almost 40 years after its first viewing. The futuristic show centered on the adventures of the crew aboard the USS Enterprise, a spaceship dispatched from Earth to explore the galaxy. The crew was led by the venerable Captain James T. Kirk, played by William Shatner. And the part of, of, of Captain Kirk was really uh, interesting and intricate, and each writer brought in a new sensibility that became part of the patina that was uh, Captain Kirk. But despite its standing in sci-fi TV lore, Star Trek was only a minor hit, lasting just three seasons from 1966 to 1969. Star Trek was able to re-emerge in syndication in the early 70s, and it was there that the show built upon its loyal fan base. Sci-fi expert Tim Williams explains the show's cult status. It truly is the first cult show, and there's been no other cult show like it, from movies to um, programs that are now offshoots of Star Trek, to dolls, to books, um, to record albums. Co-star Leonard Nimoy, who played the uber-analytical Spock, believes the show's longevity came from its storytelling. We were doing morality tales. Uh, at a time when I, when I don't think anybody else was doing it. I think we were kind of fresh on the scene with that kind of storytelling. And those stories are still valid today, and that's why people still watch the shows today. In 1987, a brand new Star Trek series hit the air, satisfying the growing hunger of avid fans. And thus, Star Trek The Next Generation was born. The Next Generation picks up about 100 years after the time of Captain Kirk. At the helm this time was Captain Jean-Luc Picard, played by Patrick Stewart. I like him. He doesn't bore me yet. And he's an admirable man. It's you know, pleasant to inhabit the skin of somebody who's fundamentally a good man. And fans agreed. Star Trek The Next Generation was a big hit, lasting seven seasons, more than double its predecessor. It tells great stories. It has powerful narratives, and that's the foundation of all good filmmaking, television, theater. But then it has underlying all of that this fundamental optimistic outlook on the world that things will be better. And I think that's truly attractive to a lot of people. Attractive enough to spawn two more successful spin-offs, Star Trek Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Voyager. Both shows represented the Star Trek name admirably, each completing a seven-year run on TV. And now there is Enterprise, the fifth series from the Star Trek family. This time around, the role of captain is being tackled by former Quantum Leap star Scott Bakula as he pilots the very first Starship Enterprise 100 years before Captain Kirk. As a sci-fi veteran, Scott doesn't feel pressure following in the famous footsteps of the captains before him. No, this is a prequel. This is We're the original show. We're the first uh, starship to ever go out into space. I'm the first captain to captain. So I'm, in essence, the f ahead of all those other guys. So last year when everybody said, are you worried about uh, following in their footsteps? I said, well, technically they're following in my footsteps. So. But he does appreciate the enormity of the Star Trek brand. You don't really understand how far-reaching it is until you're involved with it for a year. Uh, and you get the, the impact that it has had. 
So it's, it's pretty daunting in a way to be a part of that also, but at the same time, it's exciting. Coming up, our own Ken Taylor visits the Enterprise to get his very own alien makeover. It feels good. Actually, it's almost like a spa treatment. Plus, we'll tell you which show has the record as the longest-running sci-fi show in U.S. TV history. Here's a hint. X marks the spot. The show's success is, is very simple. Uh, we have two incredible stars uh, playing two interesting characters. And we'll give you a peek into the show that is poised to break that very same record. It's a perfect cult show. It's one of those shows that um, people really get into the lore of it. They kind of know the history of all the people and the characters. That's next on this sci-fi TV edition of Close Up. Fiction is a limitless genre, and the WB Network has found its own niche of sci-fi fare right in the heartland of America. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's one of the best-looking casts on TV. It's Smallville. The WB's Smallville puts a new twist on the story of Superman, giving viewers the chance to learn how this alien from Krypton learned about his superpowers while growing up on a farm in rural Kansas. Or put more simply, think Superman the high school years. Starring Tom Welling as the mild-mannered Clark Kent, Kristen Kruick as Lana Lang, the object of Clark's affection, and Michael Rosenbaum as Lex Luthor. The WB Network has blended its trademark young, gorgeous cast with a storyline that keeps even the most hardcore Superman aficionados tuning in. Well, it's just a great story. It's um, someone coming of age with superpowers. I mean, how can that not be interesting? And all these adventures that he goes through. And I mean, it's a very American superhero. It's about justice and truth and freedom and all of those things. Um, so I think it appeals to people in that sense. The first goal of this show is to show how Clark becomes that hero that we all know him to be. And I think that's the heart of the show is how does Clark go on and, and, and use this thing that he thinks is wrong with him to help other people. Allison Mack, who plays Clark's friend Chloe Sullivan, has her own take on the show's appeal. I think Smallville's been successful in making the adaption from comic book to life uh, because it's a story that will never go out of style. Clark Kent is a character that every woman will love and every man will enjoy being the best friend to. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's just a timeless story and it's and our show is a angle of the legend that has never been explored before. When we started this show I knew it was something special and you know, if people were going to watch, they were going to watch it. We could just do uh, the best job we could and that's I think what we're still doing. One of the best jobs they do on Smallville is create incredible visual effects. One effect involving Clark throwing a tractor impressed the show's star. When we shot that, there was no tractor at all. Um, it was just me putting my hands down and pretending I was throwing a tractor. And then later they put it in. And that's one of the most seamless visual effects I think we have. I mean, it's hard to watch that and, and see that we treated anything. I mean, it just happened so quickly. So far, so good for this super boy looking to become a superman. Coming up, we'll head back to Smallville and show you why there is nothing small about its success when TV Guide Close-Up returns.